Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. This video will be a long-term review of my Arma Granite Voltage. Um, I've had the truck literally 100 days today. Uh, it's gone through quite a significant change. Part of what this video will be is a qualitative scoring system based on 10 categories and it will help serve as a barometer of comparing one truck towards another. Granted, it's my opinion. Uh, however, I feel like a hundred days of ownership is enough to determine qualitatively between one truck and another. Um, and obviously this will only be in effect for the trucks I have, which at the moment of filming this are the Arma Granite Voltage, a Red Cat Kaiju, um, a Red Cat Volcano 16, uh, the HBX 16889, and the Arma Big Rock. Anyway, I'm going to go over the categories, give you the score, and then talk about some of the things, um, some of my notes for that particular category. I've also been keeping a spreadsheet uh, of the truck, of all my trucks, uh, since I've purchased them, uh, that keep an ongoing total of the cost to run. Basically, if I replaced any parts, uh, if warranty parts were replaced, um, the upgrades that I've chosen to, to do, uh, all of that stuff is kept into the spreadsheet. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to make those spreadsheets public. I don't think there's any real information uh, personal to me, so it, it might be safe to do that. Um, I'm still I'm still mulling over that. Uh, however, um, the data I'll I will summarize and, and put into these videos. Okay, let's talk about the first category. First and foremost is price. Depending on when you buy this truck, you could get it for $99 uh, from Amazon, Horizon Hobby, pretty much anywhere it's sold, generally any time of the year. However, two specific times of the year that I know of, the truck is available for $60. It's Black Friday and Amazon Prime Day. If you can pick this up, for $60, this is absolutely unbeatable in terms of value for performance and value for dollar. There is probably no other truck in 10th scale with this kind of performance. The upgradability, the name, um, the parts availability, things like that. Um, so at, at $99, I'm giving the score a 3. The 10 categories will be based on a score of 1, 2, or 3, so 30 possible points for a vehicle. Scoring for price is 0 to $333, $334 to $666 and $667 to $999, basically capping out at around a thousand bucks. So then, since this truck falls way below the 333 threshold, this truck gets a score of three. The next category is value. Value is the category where this truck really starts to shine. I think th trucks like this that give people like me a low barrier to entry to test out the, the modern waters is, is really where this truck starts to shine. Uh, and, and the value proposition for, for folks who uh, are looking to step back in without uh, a hefty investment the ability to run those uh, cost-effective um, lithium-ion cells with that tray or the performance-oriented 2S uh, LiPos. 
I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, the value for a hundred dollars in this truck is, I mean, is absolutely insane. It, again, it kind of mirrors the sentiments of the price category. However, um, value goes a little bit deeper into what you're actually getting for that inexpensive price. There's lots of trucks under $99 or $99 specifically and under, um, like the HBX 16889. I love that little truck or, or even the, uh, Red Cat Volcano 16. Uh, again, another, another great little truck, but there's things about it. Like it's not 10th scale. It's not Arma. The, the modifications for it aren't as readily available. Um, those things really start to add into the the value category. For value, I score this truck with a two. It's right in the middle of the pack. The value is high, uh, so I gave it two. The best thing about this truck is that no matter where you are in your RC hobby, beginner, novice, intermediate, there's something to be had here. If you've driven one, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. Their, their, their value beyond just a beginner's truck is, is clearly there. Uh, and there's tons of videos. If you just search Arma Granite Voltage on YouTube, I mean, there's tons and tons of videos of people who purchase this truck and feel the same way. So to recap, Value on this is extremely high. I gave it a two. Third category is components. The components are pretty good. The factory speed controller, actually I have one, let me grab it real quick. So even though I replaced it, the, the factory speed controller that it comes with, uh, I actually look at this as a quality component. If you, if you look, the ability to run LiPo based on the jumper and the, the opportunity to run a three-wire servo or a five-wire servo that it comes with, like that's a commitment to component. Even though people don't necessarily like these, it shows that they were thinking of folks and of possible upgrades when designing this. It's one of the things that makes the components on this truck so competitive in terms of value and price. There's a few caveats to this. Um, I'm going to go back to the ESC, which is, um, even though I like the design of the LiPo and the options for servo, uh, my first one of these caught fire. Um, this lead, the hot lead to the battery, uh, or to the motor, just desoldered and let go, and I forgot which side it is, but th I believe it was this side just burnt out. It yeah, it was this side because it took my five wire servo with it. Um, I'll probably overlay some photos of the damage so you can see what I'm talking about. But um, people have had issues with these, even though. The component itself has a couple of good features on it. Um, you, I guess you have to be careful. Uh, I never really got a reason from Horizon uh, why they think it may have caught fire. Um, at the time, um, the truck, when it caught fire, the truck was not stock. It, it had a, I was running a 2S LiPo with the uh, Traxxas 12 turn brushed motor. Uh, and the 19 tooth pinion. According to some internet math, that shouldn't have been more than the 40 amps that this thing is capable of. Uh, however, it did let go. The other two components, I think, that caused people some strife with this truck, specifically if you do any power ads, are the uh, stock outdrives. They're composite material and they have a keyed shape here that fit the shaft. One of the big issues that people have is when they start swapping motors and going to brushless systems, especially on 3S, um, these shapes go from um, 
go from oval to more round and they get wallered out. Uh, it's not a particularly expensive part and it's not a particularly difficult part to re replace. However, sometimes they go out of stock. Those are my factory ones that I ran on 2S and uh, did one run on brushless uh, and they are not showing any signs of wear. However, I'm aware that they do have a tendency to go out of round, so I baby, I tend to baby the throttle, especially during jumps. The other issue that people complain about is the uh, servo saver. Uh, depending on which, when you bought the truck, uh, or which version you get, there's two different servo savers. I believe the red one is the later one, as you can see this one has the red one. And that one does not have nearly the issues that the original one did. My only problem with this one is the access to it is done through this hole. You unscrew this to get the screw out and then you have to just kind of massage the, the cavity to get, to get the uh, servo and the servo horn out of there. Uh, but the rest of the things about this truck in terms of the components are, I think in my mind, they're all positive. The uh, access to the uh, pinion and spur through this, I think that's incredible. I personally like that the, the links are fixed so that you don't have all this weird geometry. I feel like as a component, that's a positive. The stock shocks, mine were bad from the box. Uh, one of them, Actually, two of them had bent shock shafts, so I can't comment 100%. I thought they were bad. Uh, I thought they had bad performance when I got them, but it turns out that uh, they, they were just broken from the factory. I didn't know that until I had installed these uh, G-Maids and realized that the shafts were bent. Uh, however, uh, I do have a buddy who has granite voltage, and his shocks... Uh, they feel just fine. Um, fluid filled, um, adjustable with the collar. That that and a ninety nine dollar price point, I think, is is an incredible component. Um, the other thing I like is are these arms. If I'm not mistaken, I believe all of these arms are the same. So I'm pretty sure you can use any of these arms on any corner of the vehicle. That's a that's a pretty nice feature to be able to buy one pack and have two spares from it. In terms of components, for the price and the value, I give the components a three for the Arma Granite Voltage. The next category is aftermarket. The performance hop-up aftermarket for the truck is pretty low. You can get replacements, durable, quality durable replacements for factory items. However, uh, in the way of direct drop-in performance increasers like uh, brushless systems, um, you kind of have to do your homework and follow someone else's footsteps. Like. Uh, if you get these G-Made shocks, they, they don't really drop right in. You have to be willing to get a Dremel and do a little bit of grinding. Um, same thing with this particular Spectrum system. If you, if you buy this uh, Spectrum 85 amp ESC and 4000 kV motor combo, you'll have, to, you'll have to trim this as you would with any 3652 uh, brushless can. I wouldn't say that's a deterrent uh, necessarily, and it doesn't mean that the aftermarket is poor, it's just that you're not necessarily going to be able to go to a hobby shop and buy components made specifically for the, for the voltage. Um, that being said, I do know of uh, at least one company who's making some really interesting components. Intigy has several performance pieces, many of which I have ordered, but have, they have not been delivered yet. That kit includes a steel spur, actually all steel gearing. They also offer pretty much every suspension component, like the arms, 
the links, the uh, bulkheads, uh, I believe the uh, hinge pin plates, just about every component they offer in an anodized aluminum finish. They also have steel CVs with steel drive cups, which I do have currently installed. Those are pretty much a must have when you're going brushless. Given the fact that there's not really a breadth of available hop-ups in aftermarket, but stock replacements are available and there is something to replace pretty much every piece of this, I'm going to give aftermarket a two. The next category is technical support and warranty. Now, as I mentioned previously, I had an issue with the factory ESC. I called Horizon and they basically, no questions asked, uh, sent me a, a replacement. Um, I did have to provide an email with the uh, with some photos of the damage and they they had one out to me in a couple days. Uh, factory replacement, no problem. During that accident, my truck lost control. The, the ESC let go and I didn't have any control over the throttle so the truck barreled off at top speed into a fence and it got flipped upside down with the back wheels pinned against the fence going full blast until the the lead finally let go and the and the uh, the battery just stopped or the power just stopped and it wore the original wheels the original rear wheels all the way down because the ESC let go Horizon is going to warranty the rear tires however uh, I placed that order in the beginning of November and they have yet to arrive and every time I call they're still on back order. I, I feel like if they got to be dinged on that. In both instances the rep was helpful and knowledgeable. It just wasn't necessarily the desired outcome. I got one replacement part, arguably the more important part, but since those tires did go, I, I mean I feel like there has to be a ding on that. The other component is the actual warranty on it and given that it's a two-year limited warranty um, that's one of the best I've seen around uh, my red cat kaiju has 90 days uh, so for you to get a beginner truck built sturdy with the two-year warranty and basically no questions asked warranty um, I feel that that's a, a pretty good feature to have for technical support, I'm going to give this a 2, and the only reason I'm giving it a 2 is the parts availability is going to weigh into that, and since you can't necessarily resolve a technical support problem or a warranty problem if the part isn't available, um, i got to take a point off for that. The next category is durability and design. As a lot of people have said, the design of this kind of center chassis with the uh, battery cavity is really unique. Part of the reason this thing is so durable is because the, the battery is low and the, all of the weight is low, it keeps the truck really stable. The design of the, the arms, the placement of the shock towers, the actual shape, the, the chassis where where damage would be deflected or force gets deflected. I mean, it's a it's a really unique design. I think that works really well. In terms of durability, I haven't broken a single thing on this that wasn't my own fault or an accident, with the exception of the speed controller. The only other thing on this truck that I've broken was uh, you can't see it but there's a small crack in the, the bulkhead from when I over tightened this screw the first time I installed it. I'd say this is a, a very well designed, durable vehicle, regardless of price. I'm giving design and durability a three. The next category is speed. 
I'm going based on stock numbers, um, not a brushless swapped system. There's really no way around it. This truck, the way it's meant to be driven out of the box, is slow. Most people report somewhere in the realm of 17, 18 miles an hour. Uh, on the NIM, maybe 19 or 20 miles an hour on 2S Slipos. I got about 25 miles an hour in my uh, brushed uh, upgrade with the 19 tooth pinion and uh, if you've watched my other video between the the brushless upgrade uh, it's now doing about 30 miles an hour depending on how you look at that for a hundred dollar motor and ESC combo with 2S LiPo batteries you can go from 17 miles an hour out of the box to 30. That's a pretty impressive increase. However, out of the box, the truck is slow. It does have torque, but the actual speed is pretty slow. So for speed, I'm giving this a one. The next category is kind of hard to actually give a qualitative numerical value for. This category is fun. Despite it being two-wheel drive, perceived as a beginner's truck, kind of light, kind of underpowered, all of those things that might make it look like it wouldn't necessarily be a fun truck on paper, uh, if you've ever driven one, there's something compelling about it. It punches way above its weight. It's really hard to explain the in intangible value of it, but the truck's fun factor, it's undeniable. If you know someone with one or you're on the fence, seek someone out or, or, or even just take the gamble. Wait till one of those periods where it's on sale and buy one. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. This, this truck is a lot of fun at any price point. I would even pay the original prices of $149, maybe even $200. I feel like this is just as fun as any of those two-wheel drive slashes or, or even the brushed sentence or granites. There's there's something fun about this truck. It's hard to explain. You just have to drive it. For fun, I give the Armor Granite Voltage a 3. The ninth category is Ease of Maintenance. In terms of maintenance, the truck is pretty easy to work on. The There's only two difficult caveats to that. One being, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the components part about the uh, servo saver um, and getting access to the servo or swapping out the servo, that's a little bit of a pain. But the real pain is if you have to do anything into the, uh, the actual gears, you have to split the chassis. Hopefully, you don't have to do any diff replacements or anything like that. But if you did, or if you're swapping them out to the metal units from Intigy, um, you're going to have to split this chassis. And that's a lot easier said than done, in, in my opinion. I've only, I've only split this once, uh, and it was basically while everything was stripped, just so I could see what I'd be getting into when the metal gears arrive. That being said, with those two out of the way, just dis disregarding the servo, and cracking the chassis to get into the uh, the inner gears and the diffs. Uh, shock maintenance is easy. Replacement of the arms is easy. Uh, the bulkheads come off with three screws. Uh, this truck is very easy to work on, very easy to maintain. I don't think you'll have any issues with it if you're new to the hobby or if you just want something to uh, to kick around with or, or, or even for kids or uh, you know, as a as a spare toy or something like that. This truck is very simple to work on. All all everything is basically right here. For ease of maintenance, I'm giving this a two, only because to take the chassis apart is kind of a big deal. The tenth category is another one that's hard to actually give a a meaningful number to like like fun or, or, or value. This category I'm calling intangibles. Which are, include things like looks, uh, if it's a crawler or a scale vehicle, how closely it is to scale. 
any of the other things that just kind of stand out about the truck that would in increase its value numerically. In my opinion, I think this is one of the better looking trucks. I, I really like the truck body that comes with it. If I had a 3S BLX, I would probably put the voltage body on it. I like it that much. Um, I like the wheels and the tires. I think they look good. Uh, this is a, a pretty attractive truck. I don't really have a score for scale or anything like that, but the, the other intangibles are, for the price, it's large. Um, the body looks good, the wheels look good, the tires look good. In terms of uh, intangibles and looks, I give the Army Granite Voltage 3. That brings the total for Arma's Granite Voltage to a grand total of 24. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, um, I'll be going over all of the trucks that I own in a sort of this sort of format, um, giving them a, a score in each of those 10 categories and giving basically a long-term review over 100 days um, just to give an indication on uh, how far I've taken a $99 truck. According to my spreadsheet, put about $378 into the truck, uh, which sounds crazy, uh, but it's, it's faster than in its current form. It's faster than a granite. Uh, it has good steering, good suspension, I picked up the uh, Dumbo receiver with the gyro so it'll handle well. You can't necessarily look at the total value of, of the car, the total paid for the car in terms of its value. So when you hear something like a $378 voltage, uh, it sounds off-putting. However, a lot of the fun was actually taking the parts and putting them in. And also, keep in mind, I've had two iterations of this. Uh, this is the second build. If I didn't purchase the, the brushed stuff and deal with the fans and the other batteries and, and, and all that other stuff, um, I think we'd probably take about another $100 off of this. So it would be somewhere in the realm of $300-ish, which... I understand does put you in something like the Big Rock territory, which uh, the Big Rock undoubtedly is a, is a better truck than this one, off the charts. Um, but for the fun, the ability to purchase a truck and grow with it and grow your skills with it, um, I think it's worth the price, especially if you're the type of person to only have one vehicle. It's not just about... Uh, this one truck, although this in particular, I, I wanted to prove a point, which is how far you could take a beginner's truck, which is part of the reason why I spent so much on it. Um, however, um, in terms of what you actually have here, the fun had changing the parts and the skill gained building all of the components or selecting all the components and modifying a chassis to make your motor fit and and figuring out how to, to, to wire the wires uh, so that they you know don't overheat and, and stuff like that like those are those are valuable things that uh, can take with you on your on your next truck and things of that nature also included in my spreadsheet is the uh, repair costs and the cost of the items under warranty uh, so that comes to $68 if you're including a, a rear set of wheels and the uh, original speed controller which burnt up that cost doesn't go to you because those parts are under warranty from Horizon however if for some reason they're not under warranty or you're outside of the two-year period those things that that had been damaged would cost about $68 to repair that's not factored in the actual $378 so all in all after 100 days of ownership two transformations and still more to go uh, lots of learning, lots of trial and error. Um, I'm I'm not in the least bit 
dissatisfied with this truck. I think this is a fantastic vehicle that would be great for anyone in the hobby or anyone entering the hobby. If you have $100 laying around, you won't regret purchasing this truck. If you have $60 laying around around Black Friday or near Prime Day, pick up two and get one for your neighbor kids or something like that. They're, they're, they're incredible to run in pairs. I like to take this one to parks and playgrounds with my daughter. I let all the kids chase it around and stuff like that. They have a grand time. It's, it's like being Pied Piper with uh, kids instead of little rats. Anyway, uh, this video is quite long and I'm going to struggle to find clips to overlay into the video to make it interesting. So uh, I'm going to cut here. If you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate it. If you like this kind of thing, please stick around. Consider subscribing. I'm going to be doing the Red Cat Kaiju next. That one should be coming out uh, in the next couple of weeks or so. Thank you for watching.